This is Professor Hildebrand. I'm going to work another example here from our chapter um, 910 material. Uh, this is going to follow up the previous video where I showed you some of the basics of our MPC and MPS and how those are related to disposable income. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more complicated, um, but hopefully it will you will find it helpful as you're progressing through these two chapters and then also into chapter 11. Um, but I'm going to show you how to find the change in real GDP demanded um, I should say demanded, not demanding, um, using our simple multiplier, okay? Um, so from the last video, we saw that our MPC is the change in consumption over the change in disposable income. Um, our MPS was the change in savings over the change in income. Um, because DI equals C plus S, then we also knew that the fraction of our new income spent plus the fraction of our new income that we save will forever and always equal one. Okay, so those are the equations we've used so far. Um, later in these, uh, this chapter, we see a couple of more equations. The first was for the simple spending multiplier. Now the textbook writes it as one over one minus the MPC, and you can work it out that way. I think the Appley homework will show you um, when it shows you how you were supposed to do it, it's going to use this. But I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to recommend that you always calculate this using 1 over the MPS. And the reason I can rewrite it that way is because of the relationship we just mentioned, the MPC plus MPS equal to 1. Okay. Um, but to me, this equation here will make it easier for you Okay, mathematically to work out your algebra. It's not as clunky, I think, as the other equation. Um, and so if you have the MPC, well, just plug it into that MPC plus MPS equal to one, right? This one I keep referring to here, MPC plus MPS equal one. Plug it in there um, to get to the MPS, and then from there you can get to your multiplier. Because let me show you just really quickly here it's really easy um, to go from the MPS to your multiplier. So let's say you're told that the MPS is one-sixth, okay? One-sixth of all new income is saved. Well, plugging in, we'll say our multiplier is one divided by one-sixth. If you remember anything about fractions, if we're going to divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. What is a reciprocal? You simply invert or flip your fraction. So our multiplier would be six. Okay, so again, if the MPS is 1 sixth, our multiplier is 6. Okay, very straightforward. All right, the other equation that we're going to use in this, we'll find that the change in our real GDP demanded is going to equal some change in spending times that multiplier. And when you work these problems, I would keep everything separate. Instead of trying to make one massive equation, I would solve kind of in pieces. And I'll show you what I'm talking about um, in one second. Also, um, for future reference, when I say change in real GDP, I'm going to write that in a shorthand of delta Y. Y stands for real GDP demanded. This uh, delta symbol stands for change. Okay. Um, so I'm going to work an example um, here. If you go to the PowerPoint slides for Chapter 910, those notes that are uh, posted in Course 10. Open up those, go to slide 29, that's on page 10, and you can see all the details written out for this example that I'm going to work. So the problem tells us that real GDP demanded, so I'm going to call Y1, is currently $20 million. Okay, And then we're told that if disposable income um, increases from $4 million to 5.5 million, so five and a half million, then our savings is going to increase by 250,000. So we're given some very useful information here. Um, and then we're asked to find what real GDP demanded, Y, will increase to if investment spending by firms, so this is the first kind of spending change we're going to look at in this chapter, investment spending increases by $2 million. So I suggest starting out by writing down everything that we know. So we know 
that uh, real GDP is currently $20 million. What are we trying to find? Well, we're trying to find what real GDP demanded is now after this increase in investment spending. Okay, how are we going to get to Y2? Well, it'll simply be what real GDP is now plus that change in real GDP demanded that is brought about by that increase in spending. Um, okay, so back over here to the, th the other things that we know. Um, we know that our change in disposable income, it went from 4 million to 1.5 million, or excuse me, 5.5, so it's 5.5 minus 4 or 1.5 million. We know that our change in savings is 250,000. Okay, and we know that investment spending is going to go up by $2 million. So those are all of the things that we know, and we're going to use those then to solve for Y2. Okay, what is real GDP demanded now? Again, I recommend um, kind of working this in pieces. Um, to get to delta Y, we're going to take some change in spending, in this case it's our investment spending, and multiply times the multiplier. Okay, well we know the change in investment spending is two million. Do we know yet our simple spending multiplier? Hmm, no. All right, so we're going to have to come back to this step later. So let me come over here. Well, how do I find my multiplier? Well, it's one over the MPS. Okay, do I know the MPS? I do not. However, I know my change in disposable income and my change in savings, so I can use those to find the MPS. So the third piece down here, and then we'll work backwards, is that our MPS equals the change in savings over the change in disposable income. So let me grab us a new color real quick. So I'm going to start at number three, then go to two, and then back to one so that I can get my answer, okay? So my change in savings, that's the 250,000. I'm gonna write out all my zeros this time so I can reduce, divided by the 1.5 million, okay, change in disposable income. So I'm gonna get rid of these three and these three and one more zero. So I'm left with 25 over 150. The math is not hard. I have one quarter on top. How many quarters are in $1.50, right? There are six of those. So this, one-sixth, that's my MPS. What do I do with that? Well, I plug in up here, and I say my multiplier, oh, look, I already did this for y'all, didn't I, is one over one-sixth. So as I showed earlier, we simply have a multiplier of six. So for every new dollar of investment spending, real GDP demanded is going to go up by a factor of six. So now I come back here to step one. I take this six plug it in there, and I find the change in real GDP demanded is $12 million. This is the point where a lot of students stop and they think that the 12 million is their final answer, but it's not. The question didn't ask us what the change in real GDP was, right? The question asked us what would real GDP demanded increase to, not by. It increases by 12 million. What does it increase to? Well, that's where we take the original value of real GDP, Y1, and we add to it this change. So what does it increase to? We have 20 million plus the 12 million. And so our final answer, get a new screen here, is real GDP demanded increases to $32 million. I hope that helps.